There's one company that everybody knows that everybody products use, which is Apple. And as you read this quote, which summarizes trading, it may summarize a little bit of what Stacy was just saying about technology. But I live my trading life by a quote from Steve Jobs, which says, it's a lot more fun to be a pirate than be in the Navy. So if you enjoy innovating, if you enjoy doing things that are sort of a little bit out of the realm, then you'll enjoy trading and risk taking. It's a humanly uncharacteristic business, really. Most of us, right, you've all been in college, you've been in an incredibly difficult exam, and you look at your score in an hour, you go, wow, this is terrible. And then you're like, wait a second, this thing is graded on a curve. I got a 65, but that was the best in the class. I get an A. Guess what? Does not happen in markets. Scoreboard is easy. You win, you lose. It's unemotional at the end of the day. The people that work on the floor, that's what it's all about. A good day is if you end up with slightly more than you started. That's what it's all about. Marginal accumulation. So when I look at this quote, anybody want to guess? This is the ultimate quote of risk management, which is, you need to survive to win. Who do you, anybody want to guess who said this? I never saw a wreck where I predicted or have been wrecked, nor was I ever in any predicament that threatened to end in any disaster of any sort. When you trade and you're long a stock and you have too much on, you have too much exposure and earnings come out. Because we remember, we, we're, we're sort of, we exponentially weight the recent past. And so because it's been in a low volatility environment, in fact, since the beginning of this year, I think this is the narrowest range in the S&P in 80 years. We naturally assume it's going to continue, which is bizarre because we know when people get older, we know the, what the outcome is. Right? I always like to say rule number one is that people pass away. Rule number two is that doctors can't change rule number one. But markets, for some reason, if it's, just, if it's been low volatile, it's going to be low volatile. That's how you end up hitting an iceberg. So when we talk about too many trades, too many trading traps out there when people think. So I got to go real quick about some of these things here. When I say trading is a humanly uncharacteristic uh, action, it says that, listen, if I think that Apple is topping, I think it's one of the best shorts out there. That's, I'm not saying that for a fact, I'm just using that as a hypothetical. And everybody in this room says, you know what? You're a long apple, you're a long apple, I'm sure you all are, right? And, and you're a long apple and you're like, hey, wow, that's fantastic. And everybody wants a pat on the back. Hey, that's fantastic. Guess what? If I'm that one person in the room and I'm correct, and you guys all try to run out of that room into my room, it goes down. Markets go down a lot faster than they go up. When the movie's over, right, they saunter in at different times. When it's over, they want out. But that doesn't mean to be a contrarian just to be a contrarian. That's where you have to have risk management. Because if I'm squeezing into that room with the other 99 people, think about the subway car. There's always room for one more. But when you try to get off, so that's where risk management comes in. Risk management is you being able to know that I want to be able to squeeze in that subway car. So when we see things, so we can think about China recently. We can think about the Greek debt crisis. These things are always obvious after the fact. In fact, I like to say that I am a master of explaining today perfectly at 4.15. I will tell you what happened in the New York Stock Exchange between now and the close really, really well after it closes. But that's not what trading is all about. Trading is trying to take an uncertain future and come up with probabilities. When you do probabilities, you're going to be wrong. And that's why I say in that last little point there, right? Most people, they trade, they manage their money, they discuss, they're looking in a rear view mirror. And when you drive looking in a rear view mirror, you're always going to run into a light pole. Now, what's a light pole in our business, right? 
That's outside losses, that's risk that you don't expect. Everything that takes place, no one expects it, right? No one expected, oh wait, bullshit, right? No one expected 87, no one expected, wait, how did the guys make a bunch of money if no one expected it? How did George Soros do so well with the British pound when no one expected it, right? It's a risk reward, what's the opportunity? You have to have the complete and utmost confidence in yourself if you're going to trade and take risk. It doesn't mean that you have to be right. And this is a really big problem. You have to have longevity. You have to work through different cycles and do over time. And you can't get in the habit of looking at the scoreboard. You know, Derek Jeter, and I'm a Mets fan, but I have to respect him as one of the best players, after a particularly tough loss, Right, all the reporters are asking him about the loss or this play or that play. And he's like, the fans think about the last loss. I got to think about the next game. That's what trading is all about. You have to learn from your losses, but you can't dwell on it. You have to go and think about the next trade. It's particularly important because trading is the most uncharacteristic of all our human things, because you're wrong a lot. How many people here enjoy the game of Texas Hold'em? What's more important, winning the hand or the size of the pot when you win your hand? It's not about winning all the time. It's about when you win, you win big. So John, who is, uh, is like me, I'm a recovering trader, I'm not sure what step I'm on, and John is a recovering CTA, when you think about it, it, the baseball analogy is very apt. We want to be right, but when you're a good CTA and, and some of the best long-term John Henry, who now owns the Red Sox, he was right approximately 32 to 33% of the time in his signals. But the risk-reward of his wins were far larger than his losses. So if you lose a dollar, on each one of your trades, and then you win $5 on your winning trades, guess what, that's the pot at Texas Hold'em. You got to pay your ante. Being in the markets, being there every day, doing your homework. I can't tell you how many times I've worked over a whole weekend, I have this brilliant idea, and then by 9.40 in the morning on Monday, I've thrown the whole thing in the trash can because the market is right and I'm wrong. And it took me a fair amount of time because I think I'm, you know, hey, I know what the hell's going on. I should be right. But no, the market's right. And that's the biggest difference from moving from, and everybody says, oh, I'm, I'm going to trade. And then they have a losing position. Then they become an investor. Right? That's, you know. The biggest difference is admitting that you're wrong. And once you get to that, that's why I talk about that uncharacteristic. It's very hard. Because every single person in this room, you're here because you've had success at every step of the way of your life. You had good grades, you did well in high school, you did well on your tests, you got into a good college, you got good grades in your college, now you're at a good summer job, or you're working full time, and you're not used to that sort of criti instantaneous criticism where they come in and say, you know what, you really suck. Well, if you put on a trade, and by the way, in your life, you will buy the high far more than you will sell it. I've done that numerous times. So you buy it, and it goes down. As I like to say, and I'll sort of leave it on, on this, and you can just think about it for a second. What's the definition of a quandary? Do I stay out of a market and watch everyone else make money or get in and thereby cause it to immediately crash? How many times have you been in a market and you wait, you wait, you wait, you wait? Well, guess what? By then, markets do what they do. Information is discounted. So you have to be an actor rather than a reactor. You have to have a game plan. You can't think of, well, I'm going to do it, and if it's successful, then. No. If I do it and I'm unsuccessful, here's where I'm getting out. If I do it and I'm successful, here's where I'm taking profits. This is a very, very simple philosophical business which is more money is better than less. Has nothing to do about being right, right? It goes back to that analogy. 
You want to hit the ball to the right side, advance the runner, and let the next guy score. That's what you're trying to do. Incrementally make a little money. That's what trading is all about. It's not trying to be a genius. It's not trying to be smarter. That's why you have people who are running the exchanges who are far smarter. When I was with One Chicago and I was on the board of the Board of Trade, all those things are incredibly important. But it's above my pay grade. They're all smarter than I am. You have to find your passion. If you want to be in the markets, if you want to trade, you, ought, you, you literally have to live, breathe, breathe, and eat them. And you have to be willing to get woken up at 3 o'clock in the morning. I'll just conclude with saying no one ever called me at 3 o'clock in the morning and said, Hey, Pete, I just want you to know you're making money, right? <laughs> Usually, it's because something bad is happening. That's part of the business. That's part of the game. You're going to strike out with the bases loaded. You've got to get over it. You've got to get to the next game. Then you have a chance of being a successful trader, which is why I always say if you survive, you win. So, thank you.